Brazilian guitarist Luis Mantovani has built an impressive international career that successfully combines performance, teaching and research. Louis encountered Rebay in 2011. This music attracted Louis because it was fresh and it was chamber music. In 2015, Louis decided to dedicate his PhD research to Ferdinand Rebay. This thesis examines his more than 30 sonatas or sonata structured works for guitar. After investigating the guitaristic context, Louis Mantovani looked at Rebay's career and intersections with the Viennese guitar circuits, highlighting the work of his main champion and niece guitarist, Gerta Hammerschmidt. In later sections, Louis analyzed his compositional style and demonstrated that by associating the guitar with the Austro-German Romantic Sonata prestige, Rebay may have intended to elevate the instrument's status in the eyes of the mainstream Viennese audiences. In one instance, shortly after starting his PhD, Louis passed out a questionnaire to his audience and which is, by the way, a really nice methodology to include audience opinions. It's really fresh methodology. And so in this questionnaire, he found that really nobody knew Rebay, although Rebay composed more than 400 works. It's unbelievable. So Rebay was not a guitarist himself, but reacted to previous guitar playing traditions, which were mostly circuit around entertainment and clubs. It has been an incredible experience to record this sonata by Ferdinand Rebay in the Cistercian Abbey of Heiligenkreuz near Vienna. The Heiligenkreuz Abbey exists since the 12th century and there Rebay learned music and sung as a choir boy during his childhood. Besides, after his passing in 1953, many of his manuscripts were donated to the Abbey's music archives, including the autograph of this sonata. A former choir master and professor of piano at the Vienna Academy, Rebay was a pioneer among the non-guitarist composers that started to write for the guitar in the 1920s. However, rather than engaging with modernism, his music looks back to the 19th century. I consider him a belated bridge to the almost non-existent Viennese romantic repertoire for guitar. During my PhD research, I investigated his chamber sonatas, but recently turned my attention to the seven solo guitar sonatas as well. I have reasons to believe that the sonata in E major number no. 2 was not performed during Hebaya's lifetime. This is suggested by the very clean autograph, which does not show any signs of collaboration with guitarists, such as fingerings, crossed out notes, or paste overs. This is an extraordinary sonata in four movements, lasting over 25 minutes. Rebay wrote it in 1941 as a birthday gift to his niece guitarist Gerta Hammerschmidt. This recording finally brings the piece to life more than 80 years after its composition.
Since 2003, Luis Mantovani has been teaching at the State University of Santa Catarina, UDESC. In addition to university teaching, Luis is regularly invited for teaching master classes and presenting lectures worldwide. Luis's versatility as a scholar is unbelievable. That he wrote the new growth article on Ferdinand Rebay, um, many publications, all peer reviewed. For example, he wrote a peer reviewed article for the Revista Vortex Journal titled Editing Strategies for Overcoming Instrumentation Issues in Rebay's Großes Duo in Amol. Here he writes about the little known status of Rebay. Lewis thinks a lot about notation and how to understand Rebay's meticulous notation and realize it convincingly. He looks a lot at manuscripts, the composer's handwriting to really understand the music from the inside. Lewis suggests a historically grounded interpretation that can really serve future guitarists. And this is a really phenomenal contribution of Lewis's research. Among the libraries that hold Rebay's works are Faced with the lack of a continuous performance tradition of Rebay's guitar music, Louis proposed to incorporate an extended stylistic and technical mindset, largely supported by historical investigation, which helps understand Rebay's meticulous notation and realize it convincingly. I think I, I've always liked to read and to write, but research, uh, purely speaking, it's something that I have only truly engaged with in the last few years, uh, basically when I started my PhD in London. And um, when I started it, I thought it was going to be more like a DMA with lots of practicing, lots of performing, but then it turned out to be completely different. Uh, which nevertheless I still fell in love with. Um, yeah. But um, at some point I, I realized that it would only make sense for me to, to keep doing research, to keep researching if I would be able to integrate it with my, with my art, with my playing. Mm -hmm. So I think I managed to, to work that out on many levels. Uh, for example, uh, historical investigation that uh, clarifies context in which the composer lived or, or worked helps me to connect emotionally with the musical material in a way that goes beyond the, 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 the mere, mere technique or self-expression, right? Um, or understanding sources, manuscripts, uh, analyzing them. This makes, me, this makes it possible to reconstruct ideas that might have been lost in the in the course of the performance tradition of a certain piece, for example, or um, another layer, for example, uh, historical infor historically informed performance, taking it as I do, not in a, as a dogmatic set of instructions, but rather as a tool to expand the stylistic mindset for a 21st century musician. Uh, this really, I think, increased my palette to a, to a level that I was not aware of before, right? Or also uh, being able to engage with the text, with the musical text critically, and eventually even do what I called in my research a uh, posthumous collaboration with a dead composer. Uh, it's something that is, I think it's essential to perpetuate a performance tradition and uh, I think that research gives you authority to do all of this in a responsible and informed way. This is very difficult because it's sometimes uh, it's very difficult to explain with words what moves you as a performer but I think that for me 
performing is, is to be able to express myself fully. It's like showing who you really are. And that takes some courage, actually, to open up yourself for that. But I don't mean that in a narcissistic way, you know, uh, it's rather the opposite. It's like sharing, blending with your audience, giving something that is very precious. I think that my main concern when I perform is to move my audiences. But I, I also teach, as you do as well, and I see uh, how difficult it is to get to this point with many of my students, because there are other factors in the game here. And, and so, of course, there's a balance between technical competence and, and expression, um, between critically understanding what the music is about, but also how do you want to express yourself through it, right? So I think that the, the bottom line is that when I choose my repertoire, I'll, I, I, today I only play music that I really feel connected with, almost metaphysical, I could say, you know? But then there's another perspective that I also thought of when you asked me this question, which is what it is to be a performer today and how do we deal with the market as well? And I think we, we live today in a world that is very different from the world that I grew up in. And uh, I think that the way that digital music and social media affected the work of musicians is actually quite uh, mind blowing. I chose to be an artist in order to express myself and not to sell myself as a product. You don't want your students to, to be expressive in your way. Right. You want them to develop their own voice. So it, it takes time. It's a long journey, I think. Yeah. Uh, this was linked to an article uh, that, that is called Fine Tuning Ferdinand Rebaix's Second Sonata in E Major for guitar, in which I reflect upon the form intervention that are necessary to bring the piece to life. Uh, and the article uh, has uh, just last week received the Best Paper Award from the Austrian Musicological Society. and will be published soon in their online journal Musicologica Austriaca. And so this is my goal, actually. My goal is to, is to show both sides of the, of the, of the coin, you know, uh, and it has everything to do with what I, what I said before. I want research to inform my performance and, and vice versa. So this is what I want to do. I, I, in my case, I don't see um, artistic research as a mean in itself. I see it as support for my artistic practice. Mm -hmm.